who established us so that we can worship him in the proper, in the best suitable way, worthy of his kingship in our lives. So the Lord is going to be teaching us today kingdom purpose. I am convinced while I'm meditating this particular teaching that every person here on earth ultimately is searching for two things in life. First things first is power. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> first things first is power and the second thing is purpose. And all of us look for this meaning upon everything that is existing and the tangibility of the things in this world. We are looking for power. We are looking for purpose on the things that we see in this world. That's the reason why when we are trying to look for power, most of us are exhausted. Even Christians, they, there is a term that is so-called burned out. Like you were on fire and then later on you say, I'm so exhausted and I'm so burned out. Because you are trying to understand and you're trying to pursue this type of power, but you don't know how to get it. So you get tired. I hope you don't get sick and tired. But I think you're heading on that direction if you don't understand what is your what is the Word of God, the reality of the Word of God. And if we are trying to understand our purpose, because it's so hard to live in this world, to just exist and not understand why are we really here for. It is frustrating. So majority of the emotions that are playing upon our lives is exhaustion and frustration. Because you're trying to do something, you're trying to meet something that is actually not right. But you're trying. Hence, the word of the Lord today is actually a guidance for us to pursue what is right and according to His will. And for us to primarily understand where is our purpose and where is the power coming from, let us always go back to the Word of God. I just wanna I, I just wanna emphasize this word before I go to the to the creation. Because I believe the, the word of the creation will best explain to us how we all would like to go back and see why are we here for. Alam mo po pinag ko yung word ng Panginoon. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, go back to basics. We need to learn to go back to basics. Sometimes we think, oh, I have grown so much. I am already bearing fruit. I'm already in this part where I'm already showcasing the power of the Lord well and good. But don't forget to go, go back to your roots. Kaya pala ang mga Filipinong sabi ng tao hindi marunong tumingin, tumingon sa pinanggalingan, my, my state neck, hindi. <laughs> hindi makakarating sa pagduroonan. Di po ba? If you want to really get to where the Lord wants you to go, it is good to go back and see what are you really made of and who actually made you, for what purpose. Because by not understanding your purpose and your power, you could live this life Wasting your time, wasting our time, actually, this goes to all of us. The teaching of the Lord today goes to all of us. We don't want to continue wasting our time. Because time is not in the palm of our hands. Today, if this day finishes, Friday is gone. Today is the 31st, right? Then March is over. We step into April 1. You cannot return it back anymore. So I declare your, your, um, your hearts and your minds are open right now as the Lord would teach us about our purpose. Because Luke 4, 43 says, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. First things first, you cannot preach what you don't know. Right? We always say that here at OBG, we know that you and I will be deployed one day. We know that we will not stay in the four corners of this room. We know that tomorrow, dudes will be going to the Philippines, and there will be great deployment and work that the Lord would want her to do there. And I also know that goes for each and every one of us. And Luke, is, Luke himself, he is very much affected by what the Lord has done upon his life and the working power that went through him 
that he has this consciousness to extend the same to other people. Are you having that consciousness right now? Are you saying to yourself, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also? Maaring wala pa ngayon. Maaring bukas meron. No pressure. But this is where you're gonna be. The moment that you understand what the Lord has done to you, what are you made of, you cannot contain Him within this city. Within your family. You need to go out there and tell people about it. Because this is the deployment and actually this is the commission. You are commissioned by the Lord to do this. Can I ask you to read through this please? Let's go back to our history. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let man have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. History class 101. 101 today. God said, let us make mani-mani po natin, hindi pa mani-mani na. Pira-pirasuhin natin. <laughs> Let's just go bits by bits. You know when you study the Bible, it's good to go word by word. To understand the context of it. The Lord said, then God said, Let us make man according to our man in our image. When we say, let us, it just shows that God was never alone. Amen. So when people tell you there's only one God and there is no God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, send them to Genesis 1, 26. Alam na namang si Lord, siya rin, sarili niya rin, ako, ako. Parang, ang dami natin dalawa, napapaligiran kita. <laughs> Di ba? Parang ganun lang yan eh. But you know what? This shows that God is not alone. Probably it does not say that there is the God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in this particular verse, but it shows that He is not alone. So it says there, let us make man in our image, meaning they have decided together. In unity, they have agreed to make man according to the image of God. What is the image of God? Iyon po ba yung mga imahe na ginagawa natin? Yun po ba ang imahe ng Panginoon? Because if the image of God is that, ang sabi po is, let us make man according to an image. If we're talking about an image that actually looks like the one with the nose, the one with the eyes, the one with the lips, then why is your nose different than mine? Why is the nose of that image that we are making different than yours? Are you thinking about that? When the Lord is saying, let us make man according to, the, to our image, meaning the bumahan, the, what do you call about the bumahan in English? The mold is the same. The motor is the same. So if the motor is the same, why is your image different than ours? Because we think all along that this image that the Lord is talking about in this particular verse is something that is of the physical. But the Lord is trying to tell us, when you were made, you are a spiritual being more than a physical being. Do you know that you are a spiritual being more than the physical being? The moment that that reveals to you, you can understand how powerful you are because this physical body is going to deteriorate. At a particular age, you cannot do what you, you used to do before. You are limited within this body. So the enemy always wants to tell us that you are just a physical being. But the Lord is trying to tell us today, you are a spiritual being. Remember what the Lord said in this word, I am spirit and those who want to worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And God created a spiritual being over each and every one of us. Kaya ka, that's the reason why the enemy wants to attack you. And even the warfare is not on the flesh. Because the flesh profits nothing. The enemy would want to attack you in the spirit because it is your spirit that's actually in warfare with him. But if you're trying to behave according to your boxing capabilities and your muscles, that's when we fail. Because we try to fight the enemy over our physical when you are actually more natural in the spiritual. 
It's just like a fish trying to climb a tree. You cannot climb a tree as good as a person or a monkey. Because a monkey is naturally capable of doing that. So until unless you understand that you're a spiritual being made in the perfect image of God, wow, what a powerful revelation. And the Lord is also saying, according to our likeness, if how God is, we are like Him. So hard to digest, no? It's too much. And we have not even reached the second sentence. Let us make man the Lord decided to make us according to His image, a spiritual being that functions like Him. That's the reason why we can speak life and death. Because when God created heaven and earth, He used His tongue to speak life and there was life. There, was, there, were, there were creations. We were made in the function of the Lord, in the likeness of Him. And the Lord also said, so alam na natin na the create sa atin is the Lord. And we also know that, they, that He is not alone when He created us. And we also understand that when God created man, this man, in Hebrew, is called Adam. So the word Adam does not only represent the first man. We are all Adam. That's why sometimes you hear the Adamic nature. When you hear that word, we are all Adams. Don't think that because you're a female, you're not Adam. Adam is a Greek word of, or the Hebrew word of man. So we were made in the image and the likeness of God. And it also says there, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. But during this time, he, is, he made one person, right? But you see the sovereign, all-knowing characteristic of the Lord. Every time you read the word of God, you get amazed with God. Every time you read the word of God, you're like, you're really an amazing God. You continually reveal yourselves. Even at Genesis 1.26, on the sixth day of creation, when he first created Adam, he already said, let them have the plurality of his creation. He knew that there would be no one Adam only. That there will be Marisa, there will be Mark, there will be Rochelle, there will be Shalu, and there will be Zen on that day that he will be creating. He knew that who will be created. And the Lord as well said that he would give us dominion over the fish of the sea. I want to highlight this dominion because this is where the Lord wants to emphasize more. You know, the word dominion is mamlaka. Can you say that? Mamlaka. Mamlaka. Mamlaka in Hebrew. And you know that dominion word over there means kingdom. It means sovereign rule. Walang limitation. It means a royal power. When God created us according to His image, according to His likeness, the Lord also gave us a pre-designated authority and dominion over. The Lord gave you a kingdom even in the creation itself. That's why if we don't understand that the Lord really works within kingdom principles, it's going to be very hard to understand how we're going to be working with Him. Or how, gonna, how are we going to be walking hand in hand with Him. When the Lord gave us, the main reason when God created us is because He entrusted us a kingdom. He entrusted us a sovereign power and an authority and a royal power. Sabihin niyo po doon sa katabi niyo, Royal, di ka pala. Royal. Kung tinignan niyo, hindi halata, di po ba? When you, when you look at the person, you wouldn't think that they are royalty. Because we are talking about the spiritual reality. And that's, the Lord wants to break the physical, the physical reality. Because the Lord wants us to understand that the reality that we must really focus upon is who we are in the spirit. 
Because all this time, we always feel like we are a slave of someone when we are royalty. And the Lord is trying to teach us when you truly understand that the Lord works within kingdom principles, you will understand. We always say this, but I declare we understand this. There is no free will in the kingdom, but only full submission. Wow. Amen. If you understand that God, our Lord, when you say, I lord myself over you, you own me. Sometimes we say the word Lord. Kanina, haba ng Lord natin. Lord, haba, no? But do, you really, do we really understand what the Lord means? Lordship means ownership. Jurisdiction over us. When you say that He is the King, He is the one in charge of you. He is the one who owns you, actually. And in the kingdom of God, there is no free will. The moment that you accept Jesus as your king, he is already the one in charge of you. And in the kingdom, there is no way you can have a free will. Oh, it's my choice. I have free will. Really? You're not in the kingdom. You're not living within kingdom principles, which we used to have before. But the Lord is breaking that now. There is no more choice. But remember, our Father is a good, good Father. The moment that you understand who He is, you will freely go and be adapted within His kingdom principles. Because if the King is good, and you have no questions and doubt about that, then you would have no apprehensions why you would like to be under His kingship. If you understand that the king is good, you will have no doubts, you will have no worries why you wanted to be under his kingship. But the Lord is telling us right now, the moment you step upon my kingship, your free will is gone. Amen. And I would want your full submission. Kung kailangan tumaba ka, tumiwarek ka, you have to submit to your king. You will not bow down down to any other. But we bow down only to the will of the king. And when you don't submit to the king, it's rebellion. And rebellion in the word of God is equivalent to witchcraft. This is a sad reality, but we thought that ganun ganun lang. Oh, because I don't want to choose you now, Lord. I would just want to use my free will and choose this. Oh yeah? Without you knowing, you are rebelling against the kingdom of heaven. So many, so many angels have already fallen off heaven just because they rebelled against God. And we don't want to be one of them who have already seen the goodness of God and have fallen just because we wanted to do our free will when the free will is no longer there. That's the reason why Satan in Genesis also told him, you know what? This is not what the Lord wanted to say. This is what He wanted to say. And if you eat this, you will be like God. Even right now, the, the enemy will tell you, Oh, you know what? You, have, you still have a choice. You still have a free will. And if you do this, you will be like this. Be careful. Be very vigilant. Be very vigilant. Because the enemy will always want to steal things from us. Even when we think we have already reached, the enemy will still be able to pull us back if we are not vigilant about it. And when we rebel against the Lord, this is a reminder and a warning. When we rebel against the Lord, we could lose our power and we could lose our purpose. The Lord will never withhold anything from us. But remember, in the kingdom, there's an adversary. And our adversary, he is so addicted to stealing, killing, and destroying us. And he wanted us to lose our power and to lose our purpose. But what does people do? Just because we wanted to regain the, this kingdom of God and we wanted to be closer in the Lord, we have actually ran forth and moved on to religion. Last Wednesday, we went for um, evangelism outreach. Corporate evangelism in Albica. 
Do you know when you come to people, they run away? <laughs> it's weird, you know? But you can understand it in the spirit. Their spirit is already fearful of your presence. But you just want, you just want to go, Hi, I know, they don't want you. They don't want you to pray for them. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to hear what you have to say. They just don't want you. And you know, some of them, they said, I don't want because I have my religion. I don't share that religion. I have my religion and I don't want you. In our desire to think, to reach the Lord, or to reach the original position, we have gone and wanted a religion. But religion cannot save mankind. Yung iba mga mga tao, if you say, sagot ang papako sa cross, nag, ano ba tayo ito? Nag-pepenitensya. Why? I believe their intention is to give back to God. Because they thought that this is the best way their religion tells them they should do so they could win the kingdom of God in their lives. Salamat na lang po at hindi na natin kailangan magpapahal. Amen! Thank God for Jesus. Because we know we don't have to be crucified because someone, a king of heaven, was sent to us so that His blood could saturate all of our sins. And that one sacrifice is good enough for all mankind. And that our religion tells us so. Because Religion is not the solution. Because if we want to understand what religion truly is, James 1, 26 and 27 tells us what religion really is. It says, if anyone amongst you think he is religious, oh, so you're religious, but does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, then what's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. So this is what the definition of religion is to God. To visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So you have religion? Are you able to do that? You know, you can visit orphans and widows. Check, oh, yeah. check orphans, check widows. In their troubles, check in to keep oneself unspotted from the world. <sighs> wow. Perfection is the need for religion. That's why religion requires us to do things. Religion tells us about what we could do and not what God has done. And when you think that your religion could save you, there is no way you can. Because when you miss one, you miss them all. And the word of the Lord says, if you want to be judged by the law, one sin, it means you are not perfect. And it says here, if you want to be called religious, then you should not be spotted by the world. So if you really think, oh, I'm religious and the other person is not, ah, spotless ka? Okay, but it's orphans and widows, no? Sinimula ni Lord, this is the true and undefiled religion, okay? To visit orphans, check! To visit widows, check! Of the things that to keep oneself unspotted with the world, bagsak tayo lahat. We fail. And that's the, re the reason why, I don't know if you felt the same way. When we started from with the Lord, we always started being religious, having the religious mindset. And that's the reason why you keep on going to God and then eventually you feel like you failed the Lord and your salvation is also gone. Alas. Because we are having a religious mentality. Spirit of religiosity was overtaking us. So let's speak this. I am not religious. I am in a relationship. The Lord does not need your religion. The Lord needs your relationship with Him. The Lord does not need our religion. The Lord needs our relationship with Him. Amen. The Lord does not need what you can do for Him, those 
mean, helping orphans and visiting people. It's good. But do you really think it can shake in the Lord? But He wants you more than anything that you can do. Because the moment that God has us and His kingship is upon our lives, the rest just follows. So if we think we can win God and win His kingdom by the things that we can do, we are definitely in the wrong alignment. So speak that. I am not religious. I'm in a relationship. I am not religious. That's why sometimes when people ask you, oh, have you, you know, sometimes when people, you talk about the Lord, they tell you, are you religious? You're so religious. Tell them, I am not religious. I speak about him because I have a relationship with him. Amen. You know when you have a relationship with someone and you love that person so dearly, there's no way anybody can shut their mouth and say things about him. Tignan mo si Pastor Jexter, pag nag-exhortation si Krista na malangin sila sa akin. Ito na, diba? Gusto ko sabihin ka yun na. Ito ka yun na. Same thing, you know, when you're so in love with God, there's no way you can, people can shut you up. You will always have to speak about this person, this God that you are in a relationship with. It's going to be overflowing. Kaya lang sabi ko, may ang pag-exhort din sa prayer meeting. And the word of the Lord says, From that time, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is when Jesus was about to preach. You know, what was exhorted about a while ago? The kingdom of heaven is already here. When he left, he gave us the kingdom of heaven. That's the reason why everybody has Jesus in us. The kingdom is already here. In us. And when the Lord is saying, repent, the Lord is not saying you already start bowing down from outside the church and go all the way to the altar because you're repenting. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> That's remorse. When you're repenting, you go back to your original position. Re means go back. Pen means the top. Repent means go back to the top where you actually belong. The enemy will always want to smash us down there. Fine, daanan mo lang. But repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is near. And for us, the kingdom of heaven is already here. That's the reason why they say, Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And God is living in you? Well, if you understand that the king is actually living in you, even if no one would see you, you would still do the right thing. Amen. Because the ruler is in you. If you understand that the kingdom is in you, it will make you behave, think, and act. It will make us behave, think, and act. Like the one that's inside us, in us, inside of us. Read the word, please. You know, sometimes we keep on searching for the Lord in different areas. But the Lord just wants to remind us that the one you have been looking for is already there. The one that you've been looking for has been there all along. Amen. And until unless you don't understand, we don't understand that it has been there all along, we could miss out on a lot of things. And you know, man, we are very short-sighted sometimes. And we always like to take for granted the ones which are already there with us. And we appreciate the ones which are um, which we want to have. But the ones we like to take for granted are the ones which are already there for us. And even in the relationship, sometimes we take the Lord for granted. But when you take the Lord for granted, 
It's like taking, para kang nagtampo sa bigas. Kasi tayo ang nawawalan eh. So sa mga nagpa-fasting, para kayo nagtampo sa tubig. When you take the Lord for granted, because He is already there, the Lord wants to tell us today, the one that you've been looking for is already there all along. The one that you truly needed is already inside of you all along. And don't look and try to search for it anywhere else. That's why the word of the Lord says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, when you come in the presence of the Lord, this has been already exhorted kanina. Sabi ko talaga to si En, she likes to take one of my verses and close na natin in prayer. <laughs> I'm preaching. The Lord likes to see us in humility. You know, if you want someone to be your king, you need to humble and bow down over that king. If that needs to have your back broken, then so be it. If that needs to have your pride destroyed, then so be it. If that needs to have your character smashed up and be powderized, then so be it. If it requires your desires to be realigned and rejuggled, then so be it. The Lord is saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The greater part of mankind is that we should have to understand that we are nothing without the Lord. If you truly know that He is your King, you know that the provision shall come from Him. You know that there is no way you could be able to rule over your life because the rulership already belongs to Him. And there is no way you could function without Him. Because the thing that we have is in us. It's even different, not nothing in comparison to the worldly king. Remember, you cannot cheat your king. You cannot not work with your king. Because your king is in you. That's why every time you go and rebel against your king, it's grieving inside of you. You feel that. You are never at peace. You are never, you are never, um, what do you call this? You are never able to sleep properly when you go against your king. Because that king sees you 24-7. And that king is inside of you that convicts you. Oh, anak. Mm. We have to understand where the true riches and glory is coming from. That's why even if you're poor in spirit, the Lord is saying, yours is the kingdom of God. If you really think you are nothing without me, you are the ones that are able to receive the kingdom of God. And sometimes religion actually does not tell us that because sometimes when we are able to do certain things, we think, oh, see? Crucified lang pala, kaya ko rin yan. Magbuhat lang pala ng cross, kaya ko rin yan. May drama pa, no? Unang bagsak, pangalawang bagsak. May ganun, di ba? May ganun drama pa, eh. Kung ulit-ulit, di ba? And religion sometimes tells us that we can. That's why we have to see this. You know, if you are religious, religion preoccupies man until he finds the kingdom. You are so busy doing good, doing, 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 until you understand that someone has already done things for you. And the moment that you understood that someone has already done things for you, that's the reason why you can do it, your doing is not going to be good enough. Does that make sense? Mapapagod ka po sa kahagawa, gawa, gawa. Kung hindi mo naiintindihan na there is someone na gumawa na nun para sa'yo. That's the reason why you can be good. That's the reason why you can love. Because there is someone who has loved you already. That's the reason why if you want to be religious and want to do it on your own way, it will preoccupy you. You're going to be very busy. Tignan mo sila ba nang? Busy, busy kaya sila. There's so much meaning going on in that place, in the church. But they are preoccupied until, until you understand and you find the kingdom of God. Just like us. We have been preoccupied for so many years. We think this is good enough, what we are doing. Then we understood the kingdom of God. And religion is reaching up to God. I'm going to be doing this so that I'm going to be pleasing the Lord. The kingdom is God coming down to man. You have to understand 
that it is not our good deeds that's going to reach the Lord, but it is the goodness of His love for us that He sent His Son to die on the cross, and that kingdom came from heaven to earth. So, religion is reaching to God, and kingdom is God coming down to man. Religion, it prepares us to leave this earth. But you know what? When I do this, then I could go to heaven. <clears throat> so busy with preparing ourselves to go to heaven. When kingdom mentality empowers man to dominate earth. That's the reason if you're having religious mentality, you're thinking, okay, let them step on me. It's okay if I'm going to be having a difficult time on earth. Eventually, if I keep up doing good, I will go to heaven. Really? Your Father empowers you now. Amen. Your Father provides you now. Amen. Your power strength, your Father strengthens you now. And He prepares you, not so that you could leave the earth, He prepares you to dominate Amen. this earth. Amen. Religion wants to escape earth. That's why people who are religious, they just can't wait to go to heaven. But the kingdom wants to impact and influence and change the earth. We have to stay more. If we really truly understand the kingdom, you wouldn't want to go back to the Lord yet. Though we all know that we have our places in heaven, we have to understand that we need to create an impact here in this world, in this earth. There is no way we could leave this place without leaving the legacy of the king in this place. Without leaving the mark of the Lord in this place. There is no way you can go to a particular office and not be able to share God to this person. That you were not able to impact this person of the kingdom mentality because change will always start in small portion. When the Lord says change the earth, know that you are not the only one to do it. Yes. That's the reason why there are so many of us in yes. different places. We are here to saturate this earth with the kingdom, kingdom of God. And when we say religion, religion seeks to take earth to heaven. But the kingdom seeks to bring heaven to earth. That's the reason why when the Lord gave us his prayer, he said, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom mentality is bringing heaven down to earth. Amen. Not bringing earth to heaven. Not doing things for the Lord so it will be going to heaven. Why are we worshiping? Yes, it's a pleasing aroma worthy of the goodness of God. It comes in the presence of the Lord. Yes, that's true. But more than anything, we are worshiping. Why? Because the kingdom in the kingdom, people worship. That's the reason why if you have a kingdom mentality, as they are in heaven, so are we here in this world. As what they are doing in heaven, bowing up before the Lord, you know, giving crowns in the presence of the Lord and the feet of Jesus, that's what we are already starting to do now. That's when you have the kingdom mentality. When you truly understand that yung kaharap mo, nasa sayo, hali eh. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants to break all the traditions and beliefs that we have. Matthew 15, 1 to 3 says, Can you read that for me, please? Religion is indeed a very big obstacle when it comes to understanding the kingdom of God. Sometimes those people who are religious are the ones which are already blinded by the trueness of the kingship of God in our lives. That's why the spirit of religiosity is kicked out. We don't encourage the spirit of religiosity. If you think you are great because you are able to speak in tongues, with a microphone, even if you don't have a microphone, you sounded like you're having a microphone because you needed everybody to hear that. Okay, then we have to question that maybe the spirit of religiosity is functioning in you. 
If you think you can pray long prayers and you are good at it, and you just want to show off because you can declare long prayers, what is your motivation? If you're showing off, then maybe there's a spirit of religiosity that's trying to attack you. But it's good to speak long prayers then. But if your motivation is to show off, if your motivation to speak in tongues is just to tell people, I am filled by the Holy Spirit, and so I'm speaking in tongues. Because even the best, best intention could be stolen by the enemy. Right now, we are fasting, right? We have to be very vigilant. When you are fasting, because I see this, so I'm going to release this. When you are fasting, to be honest with you, it has a very, very wonderful effect in our body. We become more lean, we become more strong, we become more um, lighter. But do not allow the enemy to turn your fasting into dieting. That, oh, since I can already start wearing these clothes, hmm, fasting is good. Hmm. Being very vigilant. You know, the beautiful thing about it is that with us, we have the apostolic team to guide to, we, we did it together. It's good to do fasting when you're in a group because then you can share thoughts. Because you know what? The enemy, no condemnation, okay? No condemnation. This is a warning of the Lord. Because I know our intentions are always good. But when the Lord teaches us something, you have to be very vigilant because even with your best intention, the enemy will want to twist it into his will. And a fasting will never be a comparison to dieting. Yes, you would lose weight, but it's just like giving. When you give to the Lord, you will definitely receive. Amen? Amen. But you will never give to God just because you, have received, you will receive. Because it's just like gambling. But you are giving to God because you adore Him, you love Him, you want to honor Him with everything that He has given you. That's the right intention. Oh, I am giving because when I give, He will be multiplying it. That is true. But is your motive right? So be very careful with our motives because the enemy will always want to snatch that away from you. And... Why? Because sometimes the Adamic culture and mentality is still there trying to make its way. That's the reason why the Pharisees are saying, the teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat with us? There is so many tradition. Today is a Friday in the Philippines. You're not supposed to be playing music. With the worship that we have here, that's cool. That's not allowed. Jesus is still dead. At this time, there is no way you can create music. You're not supposed to be, you know, in the Philippines, you're not supposed to be taking bath now. You're not supposed to be eating a particular um, meat or something like this, you know. These are all tradition. But the Lord is saying, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? <laughs> You can do not eating of the meat, you can do all these things, but actually, you are breaking the commands of God, but you are trying to follow your tradition. When tradition tells you to go beyond the kingship of God, that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Our traditions, our social uh, pressure will not be able to take us to the kingdom of heaven. That's why if we follow, we have to follow the Constitution. Those of you who are going to be starting discipleship, you must be very excited. Because you will understand the Word of the Lord more. And not only, I was telling my ate, not only understanding the Word of the Lord more, you will be able to practice walking in the Word of the Lord more. Because the Lord does not want us to only have the knowledge, but He wants this knowledge to be applied upon our lives. I will pass on that. Can you read this, please? You know what the Lord says? Do not fear, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you His kingdom. The Lord asked me to insert this verse in this particular teaching. 
Because the moment that you wanted or you want, the, the moment that the Lord wants to convince you and pursue you that He wants kingship upon our lives, the one that actually interferes with it is fear. If the moment that I would give in to you, that's my wake up call. I have just started. Thank you. <laughs> the Lord just, just wanted to remind us that I tell you, do not worry about your life because the moment that you understand that your king will sustain you, your purpose is going to be achievable. If I need to do something and I know that there is someone in me that will sustain me, I will be able to reach the purpose. But if you're already thinking that the world will sustain you, then you will not be able to walk within kingdom purpose. And the Lord is saying, do not worry about your life. We worry so much. What you will eat, what you will drink, worry about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or soar away in barns. Honestly, do you really think what you're doing now could buy you the kingdom that passed to the kingdom of God? The Lord is saying, look at the birds in the air. They do not sow. Hindi yan pumapasok sa office. Hindi yan nag-aararo. Hindi yan nag-overtime. Hindi yan nag-iisip na nag-iisip. Nag-uori na nag or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can you feel the love of the Lord? Don't you think you are more valuable to you than all these birds in the sky? Who are you by worrying can add a single R to this life? In short, nakamamatay. Do you really think that, you know, if you worry, you will add up a single day in your life. When I was looking at this, it's like, Lord, the Lord is telling us. It's not going to add up a single day in our life. It's going to reduce our lifespan. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? You know, sometimes when I go to certain places, I, I love to take photos only on the, on, the, on the motivation that I wanted to show people the places that I have managed to go and people, uh, the ones I love or my relatives didn't manage to go. But when I take a photo, I look at it, it will never capture the beauty of what you see through the eyes that the Lord gave you. It's frustrating. You go in the sky and you see all the snow, you take a picture. When you have a look at the picture, it's nothing like it. You know, that's the reason why when you look at the creation, you look at it with the eye that the Lord has given you. The Lord is saying, why are you worrying about these things? See how the lilies of the field grow when you see a lily, when you see all these uh, plants, when you see the bird flying. Remember this verse that the Lord has instilled to us today. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed up like one of this. If the Lord is able to provide the colors in the sky, the colors on all this nature, don't you think the Lord is able to color up and decorate your life with everything that you need? When these lilies are just going to be here today and gone tomorrow on the fire, and we have eternity to live with the Lord, so the Lord is saying, so do not worry. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly Father knows what you need. Wow, Lord. You know what we need. So if you truly understand and trust that this God that we have is a good God. And He knows what we need. You can rest in the presence of the Lord. Because we don't think like what the pagans think. Pagans are those who don't believe in the Lord, who don't know God and who does not have God in their life. <laughs> the Lord gave me back this verse at the end. Because after all this, we're going to go back to Matthew 6.33. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all shall be given unto you. But seek first His kingdom 
my role tayo. We have a role to play. Our role to play is to seek the Lord. To understand Him. To know His constitution. To feel His heartbeat. To see through the eyes of God. To hear through His ears. That's the reason why we are conducting all this discipline upon our body. Fasting, prayer, meditation, discipleship. What is this for? Do you think it's just because we are religious? No, we are not religious. Because we want to be intimate with the Lord. When the Lord is saying, seeking, I want you to pursue me. To understand how much I'm pursuing you. And I want you to have that intimacy with me. And when the Lord is saying, I want you to have this intimacy with Him. With Him. He says, first. Meaning, the Lord wants to be the priority in our lives. He wants to be the first in our lives. Sometimes you think we think it's difficult, but actually it's doable. If you understand the kingship of God and if you start practicing it. We seek first His kingdom upon our lives and all these things shall be added unto us. You wanted your power, the purpose, your essence. The Lord is saying, seek Him first. His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things shall be added upon us. Kingdom may be defined as the sovereign rule of a king over a territory or a domain, impacting it with his will, purpose, and intent. In this biblical text, the word kingdom as used by Jesus refers to God's government. It refers to God's rulership, God's dominion over the earth. The kingdom of God means God's will executed. Not enemy executing his will to us. The kingdom of God means the will of God is being executed in us. What a privilege. Eh kung si King, sino ba itong mga hari-hari dyan? Hindi, patay niya yun eh, yung buhay. Tay, King. So yung mga, um, name a King. Yeah, whatever. Okay, you're not king of this world. Would tell you, can you please execute this will for me? Wow, what a privilege for sure. But you know what the Lord is saying? The kingdom of heaven, once He has us, He wants His will to be executed through us, His jurisdiction through us, His authority through us, His influence through us. So when you're already having friends, your friendship is no longer according to your personal needs. It's already according to the influence that the Lord wanted to impact upon that person and the people that you're seeing. The influence that you're using, if you're, if I'm gonna tell Joe, Joe, can I please have you? Can I talk to you? I'm gonna be influencing Joe to do something for the Lord, not for myself anymore or for someone else. Because when you're in the kingdom, your influence is no longer for yourself, but for the kingdom of God, for His will to be placed upon the earth. God's administration, meaning the system, the order, and everything is already according to the kingdom, and God's impact and influence upon His people. So when you say, seek God first, it's a lot of things in there. We step into the kingdom of God, and we understand His purpose, that it is not religion, but it is our relationship with the Lord. And the Lord has entrusted us to work hand in hand with Him. Alam niyo po ang sabi ng Panginoon sa akin, Ikaw at ako. Kaya po sabi ko, the King and I. The Lord wants you more than your religion. The kingdom of God wants you to be the ambassador of this kingdom. The ambassador that will influence people and impact, impact this world with His presence. But all this time, the enemy tried to disqualify us with this position by telling us that our religion could actually lead us there. But the Lord is saying, I don't need your religion. I want you. So we're going to go back to basic and say, I'm going to give myself to you because the Lord is saying, I have, the Lord is saying in 1 Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen race. You know, when I speak this, you want to close your eyes because 
This is the what the Lord this is what the Lord is telling who you are. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That is who we are in the Lord. The secret to tapping on our power and purpose in life is discovering who we truly are in the Lord. And the Lord is saying, discover who I am. Seek me. Understand me. And apply application of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. What you can do, what religion tells you to do, postpones the kingdom to a future experience. But we must remember, we cannot appropriate what is postponed. You cannot enjoy if you are postponing it. God's desire for you and I is to enter the kingdom life now and experience it now. The Lord wants us to explore in it, apply it, practice it, Enjoy living with the benefits, the promises, and the privilege of heaven and earth. And the Lord is saying, Anak, with your Abba Father, it's going to be a great adventure. It's better than a safari. It's better than touring around the world. It's better than that person next to you. Because I could give you laughters of joy for those who have not laughed for quite some time. I can give you an ending provision for those who feel they are lacking. I can give you health to those that they feel that their body is weak. To those people who are in bondage, the Lord is saying that in my kingdom there is freedom. To those people who feel in love, the Lord is saying, in my kingdom, there is great love from the one true God who never changes. If you want to understand your purpose, you have to understand the one that created you has made you according to his image and according to his likeness. You are the little kings of the big king in heaven. That's the reason why the enemy wants to disqualify you. That's the reason why the enemy wants to assassinate you. Because he is not simply assassinating a body. He is assassinating a kingdom that's in you. Lord, we just thank you so much. Can I all invite you to stand up?